Hey y'all, it's Sherry. Happy Wellness Wednesday. So if we haven't met before, my name is Sherry. I'm a real licensed therapist that practices with in-person sessions in Jasper, Alabama, which is where I come to you from today. And then I also do telehealth sessions all over the state of Alabama. So I love to do these videos every Wednesday to kind of bring topics to people that are interested in therapy maybe haven't got there yet, but still have maybe some things that they want to work on. So this whole month of March, I've been talking about dating. And so this will be the last of four Wellness Wednesdays about that topic. And so today I wanted to talk about when is it time to tell your date your secret? And so as a professional licensed counselor for the past 10 years or so, and then I'm also a certified sex addiction therapist, you can imagine that I have heard all kinds of situations and I love to help people through this topic because just about everybody that's dating has some kind of secret or something that they don't really um, want to like tell, some kind of situation that can be kind of sensitive. And so I love to help people come up with ways to kind of get over this hurdle. And so the first thing I wanted to talk about with this is the difference between privacy and secrecy. So secrecy means I don't tell anyone. Privacy means that I get to know someone and if they need to know, I tell them, but I don't necessarily tell them every single detail. And so having that discernment between secrecy and privacy is really important on this topic because Secrecy is kind of hiding, and so that's not a good thing to do when we're talking about relationships. But the difference is that privacy is an act of self-respect, and so self-respect really sets the tone for a good, healthy relationship. And so healthy relationships are built on trust, and so this is kind of learning to start out that relationship on the right foot. But of course, the question becomes, when do I tell? And so the short answer to that is, that's something that you're going to have to figure out yourself, but the good thing to do is to put yourself in the other person's shoes and when would what would they want to know? Um, so I wanted to bring you some topics, some secrets that I have worked with people on in the past and help them kind of get to that point where they are more comfortable discussing that with someone. All right. So um, some people wear wigs and, uh, you know, wanting to tell a uh, person that they've gone out with a few times that they want to tell them that. Um, some people have had cancer. Um, let's see. Some people don't want kids. They uh, want 12 kids or they have six kids. You know, that's something that uh, can be touchy in a relationship. Also, if um, a person has like $300,000 of credit card or student loan debt, that's something that needs to be disclosed kind of sooner rather than later. Um, some people are currently married, but still looking for some kind of relationship. Some people have a mental illness, or maybe they've been in the hospital in the past with a mental illness. Um, some people have a history of sexually transmitted infections. Some people have a history of being a sex worker. Some people have a history of experiencing sexual trauma. Some people had a domestic violence or a driving under the influence uh, conviction. Some people have an addiction history. Some people have a marital history. You know, all of these are things that if we're wanting to start out a relationship on the right foot, we need to disclose these things sooner rather than later. All right, so things that need to be maybe told, maybe not if on the first date, but definitely sooner are things like if you are currently married, um, if you are moving to another state, if you're living with an ex-spouse, those are things that probably need to be disclosed sooner rather than later. And so then the question becomes, okay, well then how do I disclose it? So you always provide context. You know, one thing that I've learned as a therapist over the years is life can get very complicated. 
And not because somebody chooses it to be that way, it just kind of happens. Like for example, uh, there was a situation with um, a husband whose wife had been in a coma for a couple of years and so he decided to start dating. And so that's not really something to make a judgment about. It's something that, you know, he needed help with. So I invited him to tell, you know, people that he goes out with, if not on the first date, if definitely the second, so they can make a decision. So situations just come up. Um, and as far as like living with an ex-spouse, you know, there's situations where houses don't sell or that's a joint asset. You know, these things just come up. So always provide the context as to how these situations came up. One thing I did want to mention though, you do not have to disclose anything to anyone unless you want to. You know, uh, HIPAA, private health information, all of those things are protected because they're important. So don't feel like you owe to tell someone, but there are situations that if you want a good, healthy, trusting relationship, you've got to disclose at some point. So let's see. Lots of times the good rule of thumb is with these secrets, it's better to tell like before you want to. Um, and that way you can kind of anticipate like, of course, if we're talking about like um, a history of sexually transmitted infection or something like that, you want to be sure and tell your date as soon as you see things going in that direction. Like maybe as soon as you get invited over to their house, something like that, you know, maybe three or four dates you need to be telling them about those kinds of things. And so like, as far as like maybe, you know, sex workers or something like that, sometimes people find themselves in situations and you know, all of us like to think that we would behave in a certain way, but the fact of the matter is none of us know how we will act in a particular situation until we find ourselves there. And so you'll feel so much relief, you know, once you tell the person. Now, there's no guarantees that, you know, they're going to keep on with the relationship. But telling these things is an act of vulnerability. And so vulnerability is what love is all about. And so some people have trouble, you know, with this vulnerability. And so something I was going to invite you to do is do role plays with a trusting friend. Um, what I do with my patients when they bring these situations to me is I talk with them about it kind of over and over again until they can just kind of let something roll off their tongue. You know, for example, about like maybe the, um, the $300,000 in debt, you know, just say uh, whatever the circumstances were and you know, now I'm in $300,000 worth of debt and this is what I'm doing about it. And so that's another important piece. Like a lot of these situations, like if we're talking about, um, you know, even if somebody uh, has diabetes and that's their secret, you know, saying this is what I do about it. This is how I handle it. And so trust, that was one thing that I wanted to be sure and talk about. How do you know if somebody's trustworthy? So a good rule of thumb is when what people say and what they do when it matches, that's a good rule of thumb to see if someone is trustworthy. And so somebody that um, exaggerates or embellishes or kind of tries to make themselves look better in a situation and you kind of notice that, that maybe they stretch the truth a little bit, maybe that's not such a trustworthy person. And so recognizing trustworthy people is important because you know, say if, um, you know, you have experienced uh, some sexual trauma, you know, when y'all are getting to the point of maybe where sex looks like it's on the horizon, you want to be able to tell that person, not in a bunch of detail, but tell them, I experienced sexual trauma in the past and I don't like for my neck to be touched. You know, just something like that. It can be very matter of fact. And so details about things like that are not always good to share, even with a long-term partner, because they really care about you and hearing those details, they just may not know what to, what to do with them. And another thing I was gonna discuss is like, if a person has a history of maybe being cheated on by their last three partners, that's not something to tell, you know, in the first date, and maybe not even the second or the third. 
um, it's important to share like maybe why the relationship stayed together. You know, I stayed with that person because, um, you know, we got along so well and we had these same interests. But do not discuss your ex on the first date. That's just bad dating form. And so now that we've talked about all this and kind of talked about disclosure and the kind of things that need to be disclosed, if you realize that you can't really do this, that you don't have somebody maybe that you can role play with, then that would be a good time to contact a therapist. And so I would love to help you learn how to disclose these things when the time is right to people that you're dating. And so thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Wellness Wednesday. And next month, we will have a new topic. If there's something that you would like for me to do a video about, please comment or private message me, and I would love to do that. Don't forget to like and comment. Y'all have a great Wellness Wednesday.